and the stuff on your mind is feeling unclear, just hop on the mic and speak without fear. Let's air out. Oof. Gets me every time. Fires me right up. Welcome back to Aaron Air Out. Episode 3, week number 3. We're on a roll. Here we go. Thank you for coming back if you're a return listener. I take that as a sign you've been enjoying the podcast so far, which is very flattering. I thank you for tuning in every week. If you're a new listener, welcome. I don't know how you would be a new listener if you just happen to see this Instagram post or Facebook post and not the other ones. But uh, if you're a new listener, check out the other episodes. You uh, get all caught up on the air and air out theology and the backstory, which you don't really need for these episodes. There's no storyline flowing through between. But I'd love to have more views on those all on all those other ones. It is a rainy day in Waterloo. It's been coming down all night, all morning. I'm sure in other parts of Ontario, it's also raining as well. It looks like a pretty widespread cloud storm. So it's nice to snuggle up. I got some comfy clothes on. Went out for a walk early this morning to get my steps in, get those 10k steps. No excuses, rain or shine, you gotta get them in. And now I'm in some sweats and a sweater. Ready to record a podcast, ready to record some nice sultry tones for you guys. So I hope you're hope you'll enjoy this. You'll probably hear this tomorrow on Thursday. Today's Wednesday. It's been a it's been a productive week so far. Uh last week was the opposite of productive, very unproductive. I uh, I spent most of it I guess half of it, Sunday to Wednesday back in Barrie, back in the hometown, and definitely use that as an excuse not to really do anything. I Monday, we did do stuff with Henry, as I mentioned, and then Tuesday, Wednesday was just a, just a write-off. I just used that, oh, I'm at home, I can't do anything. Didn't do any writing, didn't do any filming, didn't do any of nothing. And uh, that was that was leaning on me, that was weighing on my mind, thought I was doing nothing. Kind of my, my biggest fear of coming out here was like, it wasn't putting out crap content, totally fine with that no issues putting out crap it's putting out no content at all and wasting my time out here so this week i was definitely want to get into a reliable schedule get into a routine of something that i could replicate every single day i'm very much a a momentum based person when it comes to doing activities and doing work i can't just like sit down and start something like sitting down at my computer and starting like first thing in the morning it's not going to happen because i got zero momentum this is this is a big task to sit down and focus on work. So this week, the schedule has been, well, for the past three weeks, the schedule has been yoga in the morning, 8 a.m., Ethan and I are up watching yoga with Adrian, doing our yoga session. That's between 10 and half an hour, 10 and 30 minutes, 10 and half an hour, <laughs> 10 minutes and 30 minutes. Sometimes there was a 40-minute session in there too, but those usually fly by, and that's a great way to start your day it gives me a reliable more start every morning. I know I got to be up by 8 for yoga. So I'm up 7.45 every weekday morning. Give myself a little 15 minutes to wake up and acclimate back to the, the real world out of the dream world. And this week I've been focusing on, usually I just do yoga and then came up to my room and would like sit down and go on my phone, lay in bed and be like, oh, I'm still so tired from sleeping. I'm still, I'm exhausted from sleeping. I got to get a little more rest in. But now I've been... Monday, Tuesday, yoga, change, right to the gym, and go work out for like an hour 15-ish. So I'm by 11 o'clock usually, I'm like physically primed and ready to go. My body is ready to be productive, and I've got that momentum that I was talking about. I've done two things now. Start with something easier like yoga, then you get your workout a little bit tougher, and now I come home, and the trick is just shower and then get on the computer. Don't look at your phone. Don't open up Reddit or YouTube. Just shower and then open up your editing software, open up your Google Doc of your work, open up Audacity and record something. Just start, keep that momentum going. As long as I don't stop for something else, I'm usually pretty good at keeping it going. It's like Monday I worked, I mean, I'm counting yoga and my workout as work, but I was straight from eight o'clock to four o'clock. I was good. It was a full work day. Tuesday, same thing. And then even going to bed, I've had to try and stick to a nice, like, stricter routine. Rather than I can't just hop on the games and talk to the boys till 1 in the morning. And then it's going to ruin. It's going to make yoga worse in the morning. Then I'm going to wake up tired. 
I'm going to want to take a nap after yoga. I'm going to want to lay on my phone in bed and put the blanket on and maybe take a little nap in the afternoon. So uh, at nights, I've been usually around 8 o'clock. I can't, I shut off the computer. I'll brush my teeth, get ready for bed. And then I, I've been watching documentaries lately. I feel like I should be trying to learn something, trying to it'd help out with my podcast, talk about my material, my writing material, help give me ideas for other stories and things I want to create. So I'm watching documentaries before bed, usually like 8 to 9.30. That's what it takes. Documentary is like, yeah, an hour and a half usually. And then after that documentary, I pop out the Kobo and try and read five chapters of my book. Right now I'm reading Dark Age. It is the fifth in the double trilogy. I guess it's a, a, a quintology right now. If There's five books and the sixth is being written right now in the uh, the Red Rising series. I don't know if anyone's heard of it great series if you're looking for a a sci-fi it's like a sci-fi game of thrones so if you're looking for something to read some little a little fiction book to check out i recommend uh, red rising read that book the first book's the shortest one and then they just keep growing and growing and growing this fifth book i'm on is 1400 pages and i am just crossed the thousand threshold so i'm just about done i think next week's podcast might be about books I did. Set, I set a goal for myself this year to read 50 books. And I'm not going to hit it. I'm definitely not going to reach it. I think I can hit 30 though. At the pace I'm on, at the pace I'm on, I was on pace for 50 in like June. I think I hit 25 books in June, like the halfway mark. So I was good reading. Like I was reading almost a book a week, which is what you need for you know 52 weeks in a year. You get a little bit of leeway, but. I I slacked off July and August, didn't really read at all, was uh, focusing on other things like planning this life change. And I mean, I didn't really plan it at all, actually. I didn't really do any work beforehand. So I was just really being lazy and not reading and smoking a lot of weed at night. And reading while high is just, it's impossible because my brain just wanders way away from the page. And then I'm just, I'm staring at the same page for 45 minutes, rereading it, trying to focus, and my brain's just gone. So yeah, not a lot of reading done, but we're back on the routine. Now we're enjoying the book again. It's one of those tough books where I don't want to get too much into this because it's going to be next podcast, but there's like so many characters that you can't take too much time off because then you come back and you don't remember what all the characters were doing and where they are and what's going on. So I've got to like power through it. I also can't read multiple books at once because then I get, I get confused. I get the storylines mixed up. I like focusing on one book and just chugging through it. So yeah, I read 930. And lately, that those five chapters like always take me right to 11.03. I don't know how. It's always 11.03 when I get to that fifth chapter, check the time, and then that's when I close the book, go to bed, don't look at my phone, keep my phone on the computer desk, not beside my bed, so I can't look at it at night, because as soon as I pull that up, I'm going to be on YouTube for like three hours, not getting any sleep. So that's been the routine that's been working so far, and I've been planning on keeping that up. Today is a little different, because I didn't go to the gym on Wednesday doing the gym Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, take Wednesday as a little break. So instead of going to the gym after yoga, I went for my walk out in the rain. Beautiful, and a beautiful rainy day. It's just like a light trickling, maybe a light to moderate trickling, just small drops, so not big globs. So that was about uh, an hour, hour 15 to get my 10,000 steps in. And normally I like to get a little bit more, but today was Again, in the rain, I didn't want to really walk around more, and I wanted to get down to the podcast. Normally, I walk with headphones in and listen to music or a podcast. You should listen to The Honeydew, y'all. If, you if you're looking for another podcast, listen to In Congregation with Aaron Arrow. The Honeydew is a a very good... Uh, um, What's the word I'm looking for? When something is a good pairing, it's the peanut butter i guess i'm the jam to its peanut butter because it's way bigger than i am is jam bigger than peanut butter or is peanut butter bigger than jam i think peanut butter is the hero there so i'm the jam to the peanut butter but it's all about uh highlighting the lowlights talking about this tough stuff in life and getting through it and laughing about it so if you're looking for someone else to check out it's all done by comedians as well so they're they're funny people check that out if you're looking for another podcast but yeah normally when i'm doing my walks i would have headphones in and just kind of tune out the walk I'm doing and just like focus on what I'm listening to. But since I haven't had, I left my headphones at home, my little earbuds, and I don't want to wear full on like, earmuffs covering headphones. I'm out on a walk 
just my ears get sweaty and then I I really can't hear people. I don't like when I'm wearing headphones and someone talks to me and I'm like, oh, I have no idea what they said. So I just smile and say hello. So I've just been just been like focusing on my thoughts and walking around enjoying the scenery enjoying nature waterloo's got some really nice neighborhoods and some nice homes that i like to walk around and visit imagine myself in their kitchens waking up waking up in their kitchens yeah and it's been really good like to figure out ideas i want to do for videos things i want to talk about in the podcast like on this walk this morning i was thinking about what i could say in this intro what i could talk about on the podcast i mean i already knew the topic but what do I want to get really get into in this topic? How can I say things? Kind of plan out a little bit of a a mental script in my head. Not so much. I didn't write any of it down, but just getting used to you know get the thoughts flowing. And it's it's kind of frustrating because like on those walks, the thoughts just come so clearly and easily. Whereas on the mic, it's like my mind goes blank. I mean, this episode so far has been just rolling. It's been great. Not a lot of breaks and pauses I'm seeing in the recording so far but we'll see how that uh, translates to the rest of the podcast. That's where I've been doing a lot of my thinking on my walks. You know, I get an hour plus to myself every single day, enjoying and like the fresh air is great and uh, getting the exercise, burning those calories. It's a great situation. If you don't walk, you should walk. It's a good time. And I mean, you don't have to do it with no headphones. It can get pretty boring. So, I mean, I totally recommend it's a good place to listen to audiobooks, listen to podcasts, listen to some music. Just get out of the house and do something different. That's so, that's like three. I did the welcome. I did difficulty working. I talked about finding a routine, improvements this week, future goals. Yeah, future goals I want to do as I want to continue uh, on this productive train. Keeping this routine, I think, is key. And I think the longer I stay in the routine, the better my output quality of material is going to be and content is going to be because I'm going to focus harder on it and not just be like, oh, I have to throw something together and like crawl out of bed to just cobble together a video or cobble together a, a podcast and then go back under my covers and hibernate again. That's, I'm actually going to be putting effort and thought into things and be used to working again. And also the more I'm doing it, the more content I make, the more use I'm going to be used to doing content. I'm going to be the more podcasts I do, the better I get at talking and the podcast I feel like and the easier it comes to me. So keeping that routine is going to be huge. Right now we've got, I just put a vlog out yesterday. Or yesterday for me, but for you, it'll be two days ago. And then tomorrow for you, two days from now for me, is going to be another video. So the first one was the weekly wander. That's kind of like my vlog series, which I hate the word vlog. I hate saying that I'm doing a vlog. It's like a I don't know. I found it as a cringy word to me. I feel I feel silly saying I'm doing a vlog. It's more of a autobiographical. No, it's not. It's even more pretentious. It's a vlog. Fine, it's a vlog. Recording my progress, what I'm doing every week, kind of a a separate version where you can see my face rather than just listen to the podcast. But I do like this because you can do something else while listening to my my voice. And those weekly wanders. The first one was just I recorded myself on a walk. Uh, if you haven't watched it yet, you can check it out on my YouTube channel, Aaron the Brock. Link will be, I don't know where the link will be. Link is on my Instagram right now and on my Facebook. Aaron, Instagram, Aaron Brock's Facebook, Aaron Brock. Yeah, check that out if you haven't. The biggest issue I had with it was the wind blowing through my phone mic. I literally just put my phone on a gimbal and walked. No pre-production, no nothing. I did plan a little bit what to say and it fell apart immediately. So I just rambled and was very anxious about running into another person. Not a person I knew, but just a complete stranger walking and seeing me film myself talking to my phone. So if you want to see me anxiously walking around neighborhoods, not even neighborhoods, I took back trails and then I ended up in a forest where I could be by myself. Go check that out. Not a lot to learn from it, but if you want to see my face and see me words coming out of my face rather than just into your ears... Check it out. And that channel is going to be... There's also... I also uploaded some of my old TikToks from last... Not last year. Earlier this year. It's just been a long year, it seems. Those are... I tried to upload them as YouTube Shorts, and I don't think YouTube accepted them as YouTube Shorts. So I got to figure out how to actually do that and get those in that Shorts rotation. Because right now, I think you can only find them if you know the title of it or know my video channel. And there's no absolutely no chance someone that doesn't know he's going to find those. So I got to figure that out. I'm going to be posting 
more things on there. At least the weekly wander every week. That's going to be my goal. I got next week's already filmed. I talked about the stuff I did with Henry last week. So that's going to be week two. And then I've got to get out next week, I guess, and record another one. Get back in that uh, uncomfortable position of recording myself in public. So those will come out every week. Right now it's looking like YouTube videos Tuesday and podcast on Thursdays. I know I had said before, like Monday, Wednesday, Friday is going to be my schedule, but I don't have enough content to reach Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So the schedule could be changing. It probably will be changing as I keep figuring things out and keep building upon this. I'm learning as I go. And you're just along for the ride. You might hear some other new changes in this episode. Our musical director, Ethan Myers, who's in the room right next to me, has been slaving away on some uh, some new fixed mi- musical interludes. And we'll see if we can get to creating a new outro song at the end of this episode. So you might hear it, you might not, no promises. But I think by next week, it will be in for sure. So a big thanks to him. He is, I'm the voice and he's the, the magic behind it. He does all the production, picks the sounds. I'm just there along for the ride and let his mastermind go to work. And I think that should almost do it for this intro. We are, we cruised along in this intro, 18 minutes already. Wow. Just, just gabbing, just gabbing, gabbing gals. I think, um, I think we're just about ready to sweep into part two of the podcast. It's a great episode this week. I say as I pretend that I've recorded, already recorded it, and I'm not just doing this in congruent order, listing, recording it all in one big long take, and then chopping it up at the end, and then listen back to it. I listen to every episode fourteen times, in full. 14 times yeah it's a lot of, it's a lot of review a lot of editing but someone has to do it and i'm totally lying i listen to it one time go through just cut out all the dead air and the ums and make sure there's no uh loud noises because if i listen to it too much i just i just start falling in love with myself and that beautiful voice i have and like we have so much in common and he knows everything about me and i just have these visions of pushing myself on a swing and feeding myself strawberries and I just get lost in my own voice. I can only imagine how it feels for you guys getting to listen to this sultry voice that feels like it got halfway through puberty and just stopped. It's not quite deep, but it's not super high. It's just right in the middle. So this week's episode is going to be, we're talking about therapy, which is something that I don't think a lot of people do talk about. There's a a big stigma talking about how it's like uh, crazy people go to therapy or no one wants to talk about their self-conscious about it, and I'm going to do the opposite of that and tell you all about it, how I got into it, what I enjoy from it, what I learned from it, how you can do it, anything I can think of. Try and give you some good tips, and hopefully if you think that you've been, maybe you've been thinking about going to therapy and you don't know, you wanna, you're want to, you looking for more advice and looking for information on it, I'm not going to give you a ton of information on it, but I am going to give you lots, lots of personal experience that I can speak from. And I hope that will push a lot of you to make that step and try something new for yourself because it's important to you know not only work out your bodies but you got to work out your mind as well it's a the most important tool we have and it can get a little banged up throughout life so a little therapy is always good to put things back in the right place and get a little perspective change you can figure out a lot about yourself by talking to a stranger so uh with that i think uh it's time we let's talk turkey couple, 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 couple. That's a bad joke, but I can actually talk to turkeys. I there's a there was a park in Barrie, up by the sports complex, Springwater Park, for an, any local Barry residents that remember it. They used to have a zoo there, and tons of animals. The only ones I really remember are the bear. I think it was a black bear. Maybe there's two bears in there. Someone let me know how many bears were in that cage. And the turkeys, and I could definitely talk to the turkeys. You can ask my parents. I would. Gobble, 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 gobble. And then they would like run out of the fence and talk back to me, gobble back. Oh, that gobble got way up on the the waveform there. That almost broke peak. And the turkeys would talk back, and we'd have a little conversation, turkey to turkey. I should do our entire podcast in just straight gibberish like that. Speaking of wingdings, you guys remember that font? Wingdings, which is all the symbols in that. You'd like write you in like in computer lab. You'd write out a wingdings form to your friend and be like, "Hey, secret note." And then they'd have to like type out every letter and figure out which ones you wrote. 
And then it's just like, hey, and they figure it out. And it's like, you eat butt. And that's it. Got him. Wingdings. What even is the point of that font? I don't understand when you would actually use that as a purpose. Like, is that is that the purpose to send deciphered codes to someone and then they have to figure out that it's wingdings? What was the other one? I think in like second grade, the big one was uh, catch up. That was that was the first that was the font I always went to. I think everyone went to it. I feel like it's one that looked like a kid's handwriting. So all like our assignments, I don't remember what the assignments would be like for those early computer labs. It'd just be like all the right type and mail whose book house bailey's book house i think she had typing in there those all those programs but yeah anything i had to type out would be you know my my favorite weekend typed out and catch up from like first grade to third grade and then you mature and you find out about comic sans and that's like then you're you're really stepping up your game once everything's comic sans bold comic sans too oh that looks crisp now i see why there's like font regulations and stuff for papers when as you get into high school and that because i could not imagine reading an entire paper paper in catch up or comic sans but we're getting way off topic here we got we got to get back to the the heart of the problem or the head of the problem your head in therapy enjoy do 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 do, do. musical interlude There's the new sound I was talking about. Ethan pumped that out after hearing the last podcast. My little acapella musical interview. Interlude. That's a tough word to say. Interlude. And we've got one more that you happen to hear after this section of the podcast. I am refreshed after recording part one. Edited it. Ate some lunch. Had some soup. A bagel and some carrots. Uh, I actually had soup last week as well. A little little uh, side story before we really get into it. This should have been an intro, but I thought of this as I was making my soup. I just got the Mr. Noodle packets. I know they're full of sodium, not good for you, but I got like three for 30 cents each. I've never had them before. I never buy the Mr. Noodle bowls. So I got them a little, little treat for myself, a little quick bite to eat whenever I wanted it. So I had one last week and I'm looking at the the volume of noodles compared to broth. I'm like, wow, there's a lot of noodles in there. I, the, a spoon's not going to work. I'm going to want a fork. So I grab a fork bring all my stuff upstairs to eat in front of my desk because I was doing it as I was editing videos before. And I am um, get like three or four forkfuls in. And I'm like, this, it's okay soup, but I'm really just getting a lot of noodle here. I'm not getting a lot of broth. And then on my next forkful, I bring it up and realize that it's a fork and not a spoon. And forks don't collect the broth like a spoon does. So I was eating soup with a fork, complaining that I wasn't getting any broth in it. That's a, <laughs> here's a little insight into my life of what a university student actually thinks. I'm an idiot. I'm not stupid, but I am an idiot. So now we want to talk about therapy. That is the topic of today's episode, the real meat and potatoes of it. So let's get into it. I was very hesitant to do therapy for a long time. I remember using the fr- using the phrase or saying that speaking to a stranger is not what's going to help me. Like, how am I going to get any solutions to my problems by just talking to a stranger? And just talking out my problems. And this is back when I never talked about my problems. I hated talking about myself. I always thought that I'm boring. Who actually wants to hear about me? Who wants to hear about my problems? I'd rather just talk about other people. Because other people are interesting. I am not interesting. And the thing that really pushed me into therapy was actually... I mentioned this in podcast one. But it was a bad LSD trip. It was a combination of LSD and marijuana. Marijuana made me anxious. LSD maybe not able to handle that anxiety like I normally could when I'm not on LSD. And just it spiraled, felt really bad, was like shaking outside for a while. It was a bad time, but that turned into something good, you know? You gotta have a breakdown before a breakthrough. I think I've said that before. And after that bad trip, I woke up the next morning, ended up calling my ex-girlfriend, and then like just opening up and, you know, talking about how I've been feeling for the past years like talking about my emotions and like just letting it all out and then even after that talking to my friends and opening up to them after that and that just felt so good finally talking about myself and talking about stuff and it's this release that i'd never felt before because i'd always just bottle things up and ignore them you know i feel anxiety let's just distract myself rather than think oh why am i anxious about this just distract myself push it down deep and figure it out later and then that later happened to be when i'm on acid and marijuana And then I just, all that anxiety bubbles out and you forget who you are for three hours out in the rain and don't recognize your friends, but good, good come from the bad. So that was like 
the tipping point of when I realized that you got to talk about your problems and open up. You got to ask for help. We're all in this together. As much as you feel like your problems are solely to you, the more you talk about it, the more you realize that other people are going through the same things. I found like even talking about it in my friend groups, talking about anxiety, I didn't realize how many other people deal with anxiety and stress. Everyone just like hides it and thinks it's only their thing they're dealing with. And that's like, it's a them problem and not a we problem. But I don't think anyone wants their friends to be feeling that way and going through that kind of like stressful period. You want to help your friends and know that they're comfortable around you and they're having a good time. And then when they're not with you, you want them, you want to know that they're doing okay and they're doing strong and they're not just like in the fetal position at home after you hang out, just like their life is collapsing. So that is what got me into, I think that acid trip was in like July. And I went, it wasn't immediate getting into therapy, but come September of that year. So like it's end of July, so like um, between August and then like a month or so after was when I actually signed up for therapy. And you might be wondering, okay, how do I even figure out signing up for therapy? How do I know what kind of therapy I want? And that's a, that's a little bit of research you got to do on your own. You got to really first think about why are you getting therapy in the first place? Is it for anxiety or depression, for the social issues, for a deep-seated issue in your childhood you want to talk about? You got to really talk to yourself about that and figure out what you want to gain out of therapy. And then from there, you can start looking into what resources are available around you. So I know what I wanted. I was going to a therapist because I had a lot of like social anxiety, as I talked about, and like being in conversations made me really uncomfortable. And I could never talk. I was always super quiet. And I'd never be able to think of anything in a conversation. I just, I felt like I was never really participating in a social aspect. I was just kind of like standing in the conversation existing, but never being able to like contribute myself and always feeling these like pressures of that. I have to say something all really funny or say something really like insightful or interesting. And then I just had this like super high standard of myself that nothing I ever thought of what would be funny enough or acceptable to like say to the group. And also just the idea of like trying to think of something funny, like force it is like the worst way to come up with something funny as I found the best times where I find I am being funny and making people laugh is when I'm in the moment and like just it's just my natural reaction my instinctual thing I want to say is usually the funny thing and it's not something I'm like in my brain like forcing trying to force words together to try and mish together a great joke it just happens organically Uh, and then like I want to learn how to like relax and be present in social situations and stop spending so much time up in my head in my imaginary world and spend more time out in this the real world that we all participate in because there is two worlds that we don't really realize there is the world we create in our thoughts and our mind and every single person has their own unique one based on all their life experiences and all the people they know that all conglomerates into the world they create and see in their head and where their thoughts come from and then there's the real world where we all participate together and kind of figure things out and speak vocally and exist together and I really want to I was spending way too much time in my head world and not much time as much time in the real world so I wanted to go to therapy and the therapy I found that I think well I thought I wanted to try which ended up working out for me was called a CBT cognitive behavioral therapy I believe so cognitive behavioral therapy CBT is a form of psychological treatment that has been demonstrated to be effective for a range of problems including depression anxiety disorders alcohol and drug use problems, marital problems, eating disorders, and severe mental illness. CBT is based on several core principles, including psychological problems are based in part on faulty or unhelpful ways of thinking. Psychological problems are based in part on learned patterns of unhelpful behavior. People suffering from psychological problems. A lot of P's in these sentences. People suffering some... (laughs) People suffering from psychological problems can learn better ways of coping with them thereby relieving their symptoms and becoming more effective in their lives. And I just pulled this up on uh, posttraumaticstressdisorder.com. There's no way that's the website, apa.org. I had heard about CBT through podcasts and through my own research, and I thought that was what would help me best because I realized I did have a really negative way of thinking and just I thought it was normal because I was so used to those like negative thoughts, not like negative thoughts in like a self-harm kind of way. I never went that far. Negative thoughts in like, oh, you're not that funny. Oh, you're not going to do much for your life. Oh, you're so lazy. 
oh, people don't really like you, blah, 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 things like that. And I just, I was so routinely having those thoughts that I thought they were normal. And then going to therapy made me realize that they are not normal. It's just what I'd conditioned myself to do. And you can, through practice, just like you would working out a muscle group in the gym, you can train yourself to have like stronger, more positive thoughts about yourself and like rebuild that connection you have with your, your mind and be like, you know, strengthen who you are as a person, increase your mood overall, reduce your anxiety and depression through these practices that my therapist taught me. So I want to do CBT. I looked that up. I looked up like CBT psychology in Barrie because that's where I was living at the time. And I came across uh, Sunnydale Wellness. So I guess if anyone in Barrie is looking for therapy, this is that's who I found, Sunnydale Wellness. I'm not going to tell you my therapist name because that's like finding a therapist is almost like dating. And you got to find someone who's right for you. And I don't want you guys stealing my therapist. Like that's my, even though I'm not seeing her right now because it's exp it's expensive. We'll get into that later, but I still like, I'm on a, I can call her anytime and set up an appointment and get back into it when I have the funds again and want to get back into it and talking about it. So yeah, I found Sunny Wellness, kind of scrolled through their site, found a therapist I thought I'd like, set up a free consultation with them. Most of them have free consultations because yeah, it is like dating. Like I said, you have to find someone you mesh with and connect with and who's like kind of similar to you and thinks the same way as you almost. And so that they can understand where you're coming from and help you out, you know, better than someone who's completely opposite and may have different views on life, which I could see a benefit of having someone opposite to you to give some counter viewpoints. But when you want to feel relaxed and comfortable with this person, I think you want to be someone you feel comfortable with that you can then open up and not worry about them. I know they're not going to spill your secrets, but we'll just you feel better talking to someone you know feel like you know and that's i mean that's one way of doing it is finding a place in your local town now i did all mine on the phone i wanted to do in person but it was covid times so there was no in person and i didn't really want to do the web chat video call i didn't want to have to sit at my computer staring at a camera the whole time so i opted to just do uh phone conversations it was a uh, 50 minute sessions it was a one 145 145 dollars for a 50 minute session every session and i started off I believe I started off once a week and did that for a month. So I did four weeks straight of once a week and then I cut it back to bi-weekly and then to monthly and then it was monthly until I ended up stopping it last at the end of August this year. So that is one option if you want to find a particular therapist who works for a company generally or has their own practice and then you set up appointments with them on an as-needed basis or a recurring schedule and you do it that way. Now that we are in the times of the internet, there are new services. I know BetterHelp is one of them. And that I think is more of a subscription service. You pay monthly and you can get access to X amount of sessions. I believe you still have to find like uh, the right therapist for you. So you're not losing out on that. It's not like some random person's assigned to you. I believe this is all hearsay. And then you can easily, I think, swap around between counselors and therapists. I don't know if they are counselors and therapy because that is two separate things. I think most counselors are still trained in psychology, but a therapist has to be trained in psychology. It's not mandatory to call yourself a counselor. And that might be something you want to look in as well. If you want counseling or like a life coach or a spirit guide or whatever, it's all particular to the person, to who you are and what you're looking for and what you're looking to gain from it. So BetterHelp is another option as well. I'm sure there's other programs like BetterHelp that are subscription services that are easier to access. You can just do it through your phone. I found that doing over phone calls is actually really easy. I was worried about it at first, but it's like a super simple process. I would just lie in my bed, be on my phone and just talk to my therapist for 50 minutes. Sometimes she even bumped it up to an hour because I'm just such a good patient and I just gab, which I usually don't. I hate talking about myself and I was opening up and talking about everything and doing a little bit of light research for this podcast. I actually found uh, there's this website called Ability CBT and that's Ability A-B-I-L-I-T-I -I CBT. And this is the government of Ontario, Manitoba are offering Ability CBT for free to all the residents age 16 and older for anxiety, depression, and anxiety related to a pandemic programs. So I wish I knew what this before I was paying the money I did, which I don't regret it because my therapist and I were great and get along great and she's going to continue to be my therapist. But if you are worried about, you know, the cost of it, this looks like a free program you can look into to talk about your anxiety and depression for free. And CBT is cognitive behavior, behavior therapy. So that is the same thing that I was going for. So if that interests you, I suggest you look this up. The website is myicbt.com. 
uh, my m y i c b t dot com. So now you have found a therapist or a therapist website. Maybe you've done already done your free consultation, and you found someone you like. You found someone you mesh with. And you're ready to move on to start having some sessions with them. The first session is always pretty, it was pretty nervous. I didn't know what to expect. I was really, I didn't want other people in my house to hear me on therapy because I really wanted to be like just a one-on-one situation. That's why I wanted to do the in-person sessions. I wanted to really eliminate just the thought of other people being able to hear because it is supposed to be like an intimate moment and you're vulnerable talking about things that really bother you that you don't really want to talk to everybody about you're not comfortable with everybody knowing even if that's your own family I mean there's some things that you'd rather figure out on your own or talk to this therapist who's paid to help support you and you know that nothing's going to get out from this session so I was definitely nervous the first time I did it I wasn't sure what I wanted to talk about and I felt like I had to come in with like all sorts of things to talk about and really, I was it was the wrong way to do it. I think you got to go in almost relaxed and open-minded and just kind of let them guide you through the process. I had no idea what I was getting into or how therapy worked. So I felt like there was this big onus on me to, you know, bring the thunder and bring all the material when really it's like, it's a conversation between you two. What it turned into was a lot of me talking about myself and being open about it. And then rather than her being like okay well this is how you solve this problem it's more she would ask me more questions and discuss it more and it's a back and forth between us as we kind of figure these things out together because i mean they know nothing about you uh also they know nothing about you so you could easily lie i felt there are definitely some times where i was like i'd tell her i'm doing better than i actually am or i'd tell her oh yeah i definitely did the homework you assigned me even though i didn't which is stupid because i'm paying to do it and it's like it doesn't matter to her whether i do it or not she's getting paid either way So you might as well just do it and you get the most out of it that way. Just be honest and be as open as you can be. There were a lot of sessions where I was going into the phone call and I was like, man, I don't have anything to talk about. What am I possibly going to talk about? And I'm like Googling what to talk about in therapy. Don't know what to talk about in therapy. Trying to look for like, I don't know, like topics, people, their go-tos. Because I'm like, oh man, my life's going pretty good. What am I possibly going to talk about? And then those sessions actually end up being like some of the best ones. Because once you don't know what to talk about, you start digging up things that you don't even really realize about yourself, or you start looking back at things you've worked on and like have succeeded in, and I can build upon continuing those. So don't go in nervous and worried that you don't have anything to talk about. You don't know what to do. Just go in relaxed and open-minded. So there's definitely, I mean, a lot like doing this podcast, there's like a learning process and getting better at talking about things and knowing what you want to get into. Even doing this podcast for three weeks, I, I mean, the first first week, I was so scared to hit record and just start talking. And I think you can tell it in my voice. I'm like super monotone and like I didn't feel really excited about doing this. I was really nervous with people hearing it and what they're going to think. And then episode two, I was a little bit better. I was still kind of worried about what people are going to think. So I was talking about something, you know, that's make me like vulnerable about me and something intimate about me that I hadn't told a lot of people in my life. And now we're looking at us, episode three, we're just, we're flying, we're cooking with fire it's easy and kind of it's the same thing with therapy as you do more sessions with this person like i said i did four weeks in a row for my first month so every week i was talking to her and just that was really good to like help me loosen up and get used to it and get you know comfortable like opening up to this person and being okay talking about intimate moments of my life and i didn't really get into like um I know a lot of people expect therapy to be like, oh, you have this issue. That's because you were abused as a child or you went through some trauma as a child and everything leads back to something that happened in your childhood. I never talked about my childhood in therapy. Everything was about like me now or me just a few years ago. It was all adult Aaron and not so much child Aaron. A lot of it was telling her that I was at my peak in that grade 12 year, got my braces off, got all this confidence, was doing public speaking was making friends, talking to people I never would have at school, trying to get back to that person, which I'm still trying to do now. I'm still trying to like rebuild back up to that, get that confidence, get that social aspect of my life back, be comfortable with who I am. And I mean, doing these podcasts has helped. If you've noticed, the podcasts are all like 50 minutes long, which is the same like as a therapy session, wink, wink, and I'm doing this for free. You guys are my therapists. And after a month of doing it, I felt I was okay now. I mean, money did play a factor in it. 145, 150 bucks a week adds up really quick. Even when I was working full time making okay money, it still added up really quick. That's like 600 bucks a month extra. So I did cut back to bi weekly after that. And that was, it was still okay. I was worried that I wouldn't get 
enough out of it if I wasn't going every week. I know like I think every week's standard, but what I need I needed to do bi weekly and it still worked out fine. Talking twice a week, honestly it actually felt more relaxed because I was like after the first month, I'm like, okay, we've covered a lot of stuff. I don't know getting back to, I don't know what I'm going to talk about every week. What if something doesn't happen to me every week? We've already talked about all this old stuff. I don't want to just keep talking about the same stuff every time. So going bi-weekly kind of helped me, you know, figure out things I wanted to talk about that week. And then a week off to kind of sort things out again and then back on. So that was a nice way to do it. And then after that, again, the better I was felt I was doing mentally and the stronger I was getting mentally and like having less negative thoughts or being really good at pulling myself out of having those negative thoughts because i think we've all had those days where you just wake up and you're in the dumps already like you didn't even get a chance you woke up and you're immediately like i don't want to do anything today everything sucks i don't want to get out of bed i want to eat junk food i want to i had this the night before maybe you're like oh i'm so excited to do all these things and you woke up and it's gone all that motivation has melted away and what doing therapy for me has taught me how to like pull myself out of those moments they used to last for a whole day then they'd last for like hours and now it's 10 or 15 minutes of it i can get myself out of it and even less sometimes i can figure out what's going on realize those patterns i'm falling into and i know with the therapy has taught me how to get out of those patterns and think more positively and tell myself you are doing better and you've get, you've gotten over this in the past, you get over this again, think positively. There's some activities you can do, you know. And that was my thing was I always felt worse when I'm like watching TV. As I'm watching TV, I'm on my phone. So I'm not even watching TV. I'm distracting myself from the TV with my phone. And I'm like, I'm not even enjoying either of these things. Mindlessly scrolling through YouTube looking for a video to watch. As there's a YouTube video playing on my TV and then like if it's not YouTube I'm on Reddit mindlessly scrolling for something to entertain me and like neither of these things I'm enjoying I don't like what I'm doing right now why am I doing this so that's when I would start uh back in COVID times I had I got into kettlebelling doing kettlebell swings squats all that all those things I'd be like okay get off your phone and just pick up the kettlebell for 10 minutes and then that 10 minutes of kettlebelling t- turn into like half an hour And then after doing that, I felt energized again, and I would go on to do something else, read a book, play guitar. Just my thing was get that momentum going, start an activity, because I felt so bad when I was just doing nothing and wasting my time and knowing I'm just wasting my time. I'm doing nothing here. I'm achieving nothing. I'm not enjoying it, and it's making me feel bad. And I have the power to change that. I can fix this right now. Just because I feel this way in my mind doesn't mean that's the actual reality. Those are my current thoughts, not my permanent thoughts. That was the biggest benefit I got from therapy, is learning how to turn those thoughts in my head completely around and being more positive person overall and enjoying things more and looking forward to doing things. There's a long period of my life where I was never really excited for anything. There were never there was times where I was I was never happy, but I was also never sad. I was just living in this this limbo, this purgatory of emotion where i'm like well not i thought depression was being an immensely sad person or it's more of being like feeling nothing i mean it can be being very sad not to say it's not but feeling nothing at all as well and no motivation to do anything you don't want to get up nothing brings you joy there's no excitement in your life that's also a form of depression and then realizing that and how i can tame that and change my mind completely turn me around that's why i'm doing what i am now because i am like excited to do these things i'm excited to put these out to you I'm excited for people to listen to this and maybe they can hear it and relate to it. Like I've been feeling this way. Maybe therapy is the thing for me and that'll help me get out of these these negative thought patterns I'm stuck in. And speaking from experience, it can help you. Therapy is a very powerful thing. We're talking about talk therapy, by the way, not like physiotherapy, I hope. People have clued into that. There is many different, I guess therapy is a pretty blanket term. But yeah, this is all, this is all talk therapy, which I'm sure has been clear based on the context of what I've been saying. But if you got this far and you're still thinking I'm going to a chiropractor or something. I'm not. So yeah, therapy changed. Work out your mind. I don't know how many times I've talked over myself and just repeating things, but that's, I don't have, I'm not a very bright person, but I uh, I do have experiences to share. And that's the one thing I can say is that if you don't think therapy will help, give it a chance, open up, and not even just open up to a therapist, opening up in general and just asking for help in your regular life and just telling people when you're not having a good time or you're just going through something tough and opening up and then realizing that other people are there to help you and they all want to support you, that can change your life too. Make you go from feeling so alone to feeling so loved and supported. And that made things easier for me. Now I want to always open up and talk about things because I know how hard that is for other people to do it. So I want them to be able to look at me and see that I'm doing it 
And even if it doesn't make them want to go out and tell their friends or go talk to a therapist, I'm hoping that they'll hear this and be like, okay, it's okay the way I'm feeling. That's a normal way to be feeling. Being alive is tough. It's hard. I mean, we are conscious beings now. We're the only ones that realize it in this entire planet. Squirrels aren't thinking about this. You know, dogs are like stoked all the time. They don't realize it. We're stuck with this burden of realizing our existence and how tough it is. And then always thinking about the future and then getting stuck in the past and never being in this present moment. So that's why I'm trying to do this to be that guiding light for you. I want you to hear this and know, okay, you know what? If Aaron can do it, I can do it because I'm nothing special. Just your regular old average Aaron. Just a normal dude with a lewd tude. I don't know what a lewd means. I hope it means something good though. And I think pairing therapy with some other form, I mean, pairing your mental workouts of therapy with physical activity, that doesn't have to be intense gym workouts. That can be uh, doing a yoga class. I'd, yoga is great for both the body and the mind. I really recommend doing that if you don't want to go to therapy. It's a free way to do it. You can do it in your living room. Yoga with Adrian. Do it in the mornings with us. 8 a.m. every morning, Easter time. Get up and do yoga. Unless you have to go to work by like 9, then do it a little earlier, earlier than that. Or do it at the end of the day, before bed. You can do yoga. You can go for walks. Go for runs. You can go to the gym. You can do body weight exercises. You can throw around a kettlebell. That's what I. That's what got me back into working out. Buying a kettlebell and that one kettlebell would treat you well for for years. One kettlebell, one one time investment, and then just being more open with yourself and reaching out to people and talking to people. Don't spend so much time in this imaginary world up in your head. Spend more time in this real world with the rest of us because that's what I'm trying to do as well. And it feels much better. I think that's all I've got for talking about therapy. I'm going to re-listen to this and edit it. See if anything else comes to mind that I feel like I should have touched on. So maybe you'll hear from me again on therapy. Or maybe you'll just hear me in the intro. But either way, we'll talk to you soon. Do, 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 do. Musical interlude. This episode brought to you by the word like. Need some glue for your conversation? Buy some like today. I totally just replaced all the ums. And that, I gotta stop fidgeting and make a noise when I'm recording. Replaced all my ums with likes, it seems. I tried to take as many out as I can, but you know how fast I talk. And I just, it's hard to find that waveform where just like ends and it doesn't screw up the rest of the sentence. So hopefully you got through that and it wasn't too painful. Like, and I'm like, and it's like, like, like. That was half the podcast. I think if I took out all the likes, this would be a 20 minute podcast. I think I touched on everything I wanted to in therapy. Really, take care of yourself. It's okay. Take care of your brain. We're all here for you. Air and air out. Find your own way to air out. Whatever your name is. If it doesn't start with an A, there are other syllables as well. Syllables. I'm not a very eloquent speaker, as you can tell. I'm just trying to speak off the cuff from the mind using the vocabulary I'm stuck with. And most of the words don't make sense. I used congregate multiple times in this podcast as well as conglomerate. I don't know if those fit in well. But so be it. That's all for this week, folks. Thank you for tuning in once again. We will have... Today is going to be Thursday, September 23rd when you hear this, which means the house tour video will be coming out tomorrow on my YouTube channel, Aaron the Brock. So look forward to that. Please subscribe if you do enjoy those videos and want to see them as fresh as they come out, fresh out of the, the YouTube studio. And other than that, we'll have another podcast for you next week. So I hope you're all doing well, and you take it easy. Good night, or good morning. Peace. Thanks for listening. Hope you enjoyed your stay. Now take what you learned and have a great day. Damn, it feels good to air out.